Steak tartare. This steak tartare is inspired by a mate of mine called Christian Puglisi. He had a restaurant called Manfred's as well as Relay, but this dish is inspired from his steak tartare from Manfred's. It's not the same. I've bastardized it, Christian, so if you're watching this, I apologize, but I reckon it's pretty good. Unlike a normal steak tartare, this one is a loose steak tartare. French tartars are generally very tightly packed together. This isn't, it's loose, it's delicious, and it lets the mean, mean meat shine. Lets the meat shine. Um, first of all, I'm gonna to go to the freezer and get out the meat. We have, my mincing attachment was in the freezer. I've got the coarse blade on it. And the reason that it's in the freezer is because I want to mince the beef and keep the shape of it as it comes out of the mincer. I don't want it to be all pasty. So this beef has been seasoned with salt and pepper and it's been put in the freezer to go hard. It's been in there for three quarters of an hour to an hour. And so all I'm gonna do is get this straight through the mincer straight away before I do anything. And what it does is when it goes through the cold mincer and the beef is cold, it means that it doesn't mush it up and go pasty. I hate that about a tartar. So, sorry if you're French and you love your mush tartar. Excellent, okay. You can see it's not a paste, it's still chunks of meat. Now, I've used some quite lean uh, topside for this. You could use rump, you could use topside. Either way, it needs to be quite lean in order for this to work. Two parts now, we're gonna get a reduction on to make like, I guess, a curry base. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge while I'm doing that. Not only is it gonna defrost, it's just gonna come to temperature, hold its shape beautifully. And while that's happening, we're gonna make this sauce. So, Think of this as like the base for the tartar, almost like, I guess, a curry sauce. So if you've been following our recipes, you should have some nasi lemak, Malaysian sort of chili sambal in your cupboard. So we're going in with some of that. We're going in with some red curry paste. We have got some mountain pepper. That's an Australian indigenous ingredient. It is very delicious. I've got some sherry vinegar. Also gorgeous. I've got some aniseed myrtle. I've got some lemon myrtle. The smell of this is already insane, by the way. I've got some wattle seed. I've got oh, some Worcestershire sauce. I've got some diced onion, just regular brown onion or white onion, either will do. I've got some juice from pickles like cornichons or if you make pickles at home yourself, some of the juice from that, perfect. And then we're going in with some vegetarian oyster sauce. It's made with mushrooms. We're going in with a good amount of Dijon mustard. And finally, some honey. Good glug of honey. And then we're gonna get this on the stove. We're gonna cook it down and reduce it by half. And that is gonna form a base that we add to the meat. Wow, <laughs> what happened there? Now, while that's happening, the next part of this is like a creamy, imagine a creamy sort of emulsion down the bottom of the tartar. So that, covers the bottom of the plate, then the meat gets dressed separately and then it sort of just cascades and falls on the plate. So this emulsion is like super important. This is the bit that I guess gives the fat to the meat. Raw meat can be fairly uninteresting if it's not seasoned properly. Hence that this curry mix, if you like, the base gives the fat, the fat that's missing out that lean meat and, and, and just gives you a mouthfeel and makes it super interesting. So I've got a boiled egg, five minute boiled egg. So it's on the verge of being undercooked. I've got 
a bit of sourdough bread. I'm going to pop in to give the sauce some body. Not too much. Okay, into this I want to get lemon juice. Mustard, Dijon. All tartars have, have a huge amount of Dijon mustard in it. This one is no different. So you know a good tablespoon in there. All right, now we're gonna blitz this up. That's dry, reduced by half. And that is the paste that is gonna make our Meat taste absolutely stunning. Back to this guy. I need some salt, some white pepper, and then I need some grapeseed oil. Let's go in with our salt. So effectively, we're making a, a, a whole egg mayonnaise. The egg being obviously um, half cooked. And then we're just going to drizzle our oil in as normal. Okay, let's have a little test of this and see how we're looking. We need some more mustard, loads more pepper. It's another good tablespoon of mustard. I'm gonna use some black pepper just to amp up the pepper flavor a little bit. We'll give that one final blitz and we're done. Okay. We've got our beef. Now, as I was saying, I kinda, the, the beauty of this dish is that this isn't messed around with too much. It's not pasty. It's just beautifully cared for. So we're going to season it with salt and pepper and extra virgin olive oil. Now, one last thing is a pepper paste, a spoonful of our pepper paste. And into the pepper paste, I'm going to let it out with some beef fat. So when I bought the beef, I asked the butcher for some, some uh, beef fat. And with the beef fat, I basically just turned it into, rendered it and turned it into fat. So instead of using a lot of extra virgin olive oil, I wanted to get more of the beef flavor to amp up the flavor of this tartare. So I'm just mixing some of that beef fat into the curry base, which lets it down a little bit. You see that? And now we're gonna just dot that all over the meat. Now, fingertips. Just very gently toss that through the meat without turning it into a mush. What we're going to have is a super spicy, delicious, tender meat that has all of the, the pizzazz of those spices and the vinegar, loads of the mustard, those native ingredients, Australian ingredients that went in there as well. Proper delicious. What we want to do is give it a little bit of sheen and gloss from some extra virgin olive oil. We need a plate. We're going to get a beautiful whole egg mustardy mayonnaise guy. I want to stick this straight on the plate. Like that. Get a good few spoonfuls of it and just spin it around in your plate. You don't have to be too exact here. 
in the middle. Everyone's seen us make uh, uh, pangrataro or croutons for the Caesar salad. I think if you've seen that recipe as well, where we get old stale bread, we soak it in red wine vinegar, salt, pepper, bake it in the oven 160 degrees. That's what this is. Just crush it up in your hands. Oh, it's sharp. Crush it up into a bowl. I'm going to put that over the top. And I think, honestly, this is why Christian's tartar is so good. He uses a rye bread um, version of this on top. But these crispy bits, when you dig into the tartar, you get a bit of a crunch along with the richness of the meat. It's so delicious. And now we're going on with some minced cornichons and a tartar would not be a tartar without cornichons believe me and then finally we're going on with our mince and again i want it just to fall off and onto the plate All right, last stage, just to finish off, I've got some oxalis here. So we're just gonna pick that oxalis or wood sorrel, whatever you wanna call it. So there it is, it's my version of a steak tartare. I absolutely love it. A little bit of bread to put on top of it and you are set. Make it, love it, enjoy it, share it. It's a good one. Thanks for watching and if you like that, please click subscribe because there's plenty more where that came from. Also, if there's a recipe that you actually want to see me make, chuck it in the comments below and we'll get around to it. Thanks for watching.